Greetings traders and welcome back. Thank you for joining me again for another In-Depth with Chris episode. In today's discussion, we are going to talk about reading the tape. In any old trading movie, you may remember seeing traders yelling while staring at a long sheet of paper. Well, that long sheet of paper most likely was representing what was called the ticker tape. In today's day and age, we don't really see traders trading with the ticker tape anymore, but that does not mean that traders aren't finding a way to read the tape. The method of doing so has only changed with the times, as you would expect, and the advent of the internet and powerful computing machines. So we're gonna talk about what reading the tape is, how it's done, some strategies involved with reading the tra tape, as well as whether or not it might be right for you. Now, before we do that, there are two methods of doing so that we will be talking about, and I wanna show you how to pull up the depth of market, as well as the time and sales widget using the Finamark platform before we get going. And in order to do so, we do actually need to make our charts a little bit smaller. So we're gonna drag it from the bottom right over here to the left. Don't worry about if the chart looks weird, it'll fix itself. Then we're gonna click on the widgets icon in the top right, and we're gonna click on the depth of market. With the depth of market, already loaded here. Now all we need to do is go ahead and scroll down and we'll click on the time and sales icon. Once that's done, we can resize these to fit the screen appropriately or however we see fit for our personal layout. And we need to select our account as well as select our asset. So if we're looking at the ES, we're just going to type in our slash ES, select it and off we go. Now, you're going to notice that mine currently isn't moving because I have my data frozen at this point in time. It's from the past. That way you can actually look at what we have here. Otherwise, you would see these bars moving quite a lot. But we will come back to talk about what depth of sale measures as well as the time in sales. I just wanted to show you guys how this is pulled up. So that way, when we get to it, you know exactly what we're talking about. But without further ado, let's get going. As mentioned, the process of reading the tape is really the only thing that has changed throughout the years. Traders still love to read the tape. Just the way they do it has changed. Now, what is reading the tape? Well, reading the tape is generally a word that represents paying attention to the number and type of trades that are taking place on the market and the price agreed by the buyers and sellers. It's essentially paying attention to the ebb and flow of the orders that are coming and going or waiting to be filled from the market. So we can think of reading the tape as being aware of all of the different orders that are going in and out at any given time. The concept of tape reading first emerged in the late 1860s, so it's been around for quite a while. That was when traders started using ticker tapes to transmit trading information. Experts generally considered Edward Callahan the father of tape reading. At the time, he was an employee of the American Telegraph Company. The tape reading technique then became mainstream in 1869. That was the year that Thomas Edison developed the first stock ticker. Soon after, these practical tools were in installed across all major brokerages around the US. The ticker tape included intraday information such as the ticker symbol, the price, and the volume. The tape reading remained dominant and powerful in the trading process for transmitting trade information until the markets became electronic somewhere around the 1960s. To some extent, the tape reading became obsolete as soon as electronic communication networks, which we refer to as ECNs, were introduced in the 1970s. The rise of computers and media made markets more accessible for traders and didn't require the tape reading method of old. However, tape reading is not entirely a thing from the past because of this. Today, it is still used by traders all over the world, but they do it in the electronic order book fashion, which is what we'll be focusing on. So what makes tape reading so useful to us as traders? Well, the potential benefit really lies in the ability for analyzing the tape to give us a clearer understanding of the market environment as well as the participants in the market's behavior. That is the traders. That's what they're doing, being aware of their orders, where they're at, and when they're interested in executing them. In the day trading world, there's generally a big split between tape readers and chartists. Chartists being the traders that are speculating by using indicators or whatever 
whatever information they decide by pulling from the charts themselves to analyze the markets and get an idea of where the market is going. Then there are the tape readers. The tape readers aren't looking directly at the historical path of price. Instead, they're analyzing the ebb and flow of orders and the desired location that traders want their orders to be filled. The benefit of tape reading for day trading is you can get access to real-time intraday data. This is invaluable for short-term price forecasts. When combined with a long-term trading strategy, tape reading can help improve efficiency, and it does this by confirming or rejecting our theories on an intraday basis. This makes it a useful tool for complementing any type of long-term trading strategy when done correctly. Many advanced day traders like tape reading because it helps them spot unfair fair trading practices. These include order cancellations or price manipulation and others. And yes, you did hear me correctly. If you understand how to read the tape, you may be able to avoid some type of price manipulation that may be coming your way. Now, to understand how these traders are doing that, we should point out that nowadays most traders employ modern trade reading techniques on something called an electronic order book. And aside from the information present in the old school ticker tapes, the electronic order books also include data for non-executed orders, which is huge. So the tape reading of old did not include the non-executed orders. It couldn't. Why would it? The page would be infinitely long. But in today's day and age, we now can see orders that have not been filled, but that traders are definitely interested in having filled. And that information can be very, very valuable. The rich amount of information that modern tape reading provides also can help day traders get a glimpse of the way other market participants are currently feeling about a particular instrument that they are analyzing. And that in turn can lead to a better prediction of the price movements. So how does tape reading work? Well, understanding tape reading isn't really rocket science. In fact, the basics of tape reading are relatively simple. Think of it as a mix of several factors, including the price of an instrument, the volume, the bid and offer price, and the bid and offer size. When we combine these factors, traders get a more complete picture of the market. Now, the harder part of this is understanding how to combine all of these in an effective manner. And to do this, the first thing that traders generally do is pay attention to something called the time and sales, which is what we implemented at the beginning of the video. The time and sales info indicates real-time data about the transaction timestamp, the price levels, the trading volume for any particular instrument that you have it applied to, and it also shows the best bid or offer price. So in a nutshell, it shows transaction information. However, this doesn't say much about what is going on in the financial markets by itself or the market structure of the price action. So to get a clearer picture, traders also look at the depth of market, which was the other widget that we applied to our charts. The depth of market complements the information from the time and sales by revealing more details regarding the auction process of the limit order's depth. So this shows us the supply and demand for whatever particular instrument that we're analyzing. The DOM is another way you'll hear it referred to. The DOM also informs you, uh, informs you about the last transaction that was made, the current levels of the bid and offer, as well as their depth. This is important because it helps make markets more transparent and it makes it easier to recognize unfair market manipulations like spoofing. Depth screens are also referred to as level two quotes if you see that somewhere around the web. Web. Mastering tape reading requires familiarity with the way financial markets work, but their individual parts interact with each other in a relatively simple manner. Once you understand how to read it, the concepts aren't that complicated. The strategies that traders use while reading the tape generally fall under these three styles. The first is identifying support and resistance levels. Traders will often look for large limit, sell, or buy orders in the order book of a particular asset among multiple trading venues. Now, when they're doing this, if there are such, then the asset's price may be expected to experience strong resistance or support, depending on the location, at that specific level. By applying this strategy, traders can then get a sense of whether it's a good idea to trade the particular asset and where the price floor might stand. That way, they can estimate the associated risk and better plan their trading moves. The second strategy is called riding the wave. Always remember that you can use the benefit from other market participants' momentum to your 
favor. A preferred way to do this is by using the tape. The best traders like to realize that they don't have to do everything on their own, and all they have to do is identify a high potential opportunity and start building up their positions from there. If the opportunity is good enough, the market will follow, and the rest of the traders will create a momentum that we can ride on and profit from. Now, doing that with the tape. When the trading session opens, we can wait for the chaos, the typical first trading hour that usually happens to settle down. Then we can start looking at instruments that start ticking up slightly from there. If we pay close attention to the order books to find out whether there are bigger orders that are beginning to pop up on certain instruments, let's say if there's an order of say 500 or 1,000 shares of contracts waiting to be filled, this is a signal that the market has a positive sentiment towards a particular instrument, and we we can use this momentum to ride it in that direction. And finally, we have avoid leaving a profitable position prematurely. And as far as strategies go, this is a strategy, but not a strategy to get into the market, but instead to potentially maximize our profit in a position that we are already maintaining through the use of the tape, that is. The way this works is by paying attention to the tape and regarding the moves that are currently happening, which means if we have a trade open, say we're long on a particular asset and it starts going against us, normally we might jump out at a predetermined rate because we have a stop loss employed, but if we first consult the tape before we close our position out, we might realize that it's only a temporary pop and there could be a large number of buy orders waiting to push the market it back in our favor, preventing us from getting out and getting duped by the temporary downfall and allowing us to continue to maintain our upward ride. Being a proficient tape reader does come with notable advantages, such as the fact that it's a great tool for pricing insights. And this is the idea that even a basic understanding of tape reading will provide you with enough information to get a clear representation of the intraday fundamentals, the bid ask and balances, trading volume, and just the frequency of trades in general. When you step up and you become a better tape reader, you're able to recognize even small spikes and mounting pricing pressure before it happens. You might also be able to derive conclusions from the number of orders canceled right before execution, their position in relation to uh, the order book, and even mean reversion strategies just from being able to read the tape. Number two is that it helps traders time their exits. Day traders who lack experience often struggle from one primary problem, that is staying in a trade for too long just because of an ego. It is the desire to be right in the emotions or inability to withstand the heat of the moment that cause traders to sit into trades entirely too long. When you're reading the tape, this helps us overcome this and makes us better short-term traders by making it more real that we may be about to see a very powerful movement because we see all of those sell orders waiting to be filled if we're currently in a long position. And number three, we can say it is suitable for both beginners and pros. And this is a relatively simple concept. The idea of reading a tape, once again, we already talked about exactly what information it covers. It's not a great deal of information. So it is something that is relatively simple, but the information is incredibly valuable, making it suitable for both beginners because it's easy to understand and pros because it's very useful. As far as the potential disadvantages, the first one is that it can be considered hard to navigate the time in sales and DOM, at least at first. But generally, everything in our trading career is difficult at first. It becomes a very commonplace thing once we've done it enough. In the beginning, it may feel like a foreign language looking at the time in sales and the depth of market, but as we continuously pay attention to the orders coming and going, it becomes a more understood language, making it easier to work with. The second potential disadvantage is that it requires laser focus. In a world where there's thousands of trades happening in a matter of milliseconds and a large number of trades are taking place algorithmically by programs, it makes it a very fast process to pay attention to. There's constantly numbers changing and there's constantly things moving up and down, but then again, isn't that what's happening when we're analyzing the historical price? Sometimes looking at time and sales and depth of market to a new trader can feel overwhelming because there's more numbers that are changing than just simply the display of price that a historical price chart may display. So because of that, the focus requirement for analyzing the tape is higher than just historical price. 
Number three is it's inefficient as a standalone analysis tool. This means that just by the tape, we generally don't want to use that information by itself with no other outside factors to decide whether or not we want to buy or sell in the market. This is something that is usually a rule that is adhered to or a principle that applies to almost any style of trading. Most anything we do as traders, we don't want to rely on that information alone. It's always a good idea to have other confirming factors before we actually execute a position, and this helps us filter out some potential noise. When traders realize that looking at an order book may seem overwhelming at first, and it may be a representation of more work to do, they ask, is the work worth it? Well, the short answer to that is, the work is what you make it to be. The simple fact that it is only another source of information means it can't really hurt you as long as you understand the information that your brain is interpreting. When you use that information in conjunction with what you're already doing, all it's doing is giving us a more defined picture, a higher definition image, if you will, of the marketplace. So in my opinion, I think reading the tape is absolutely an advantage if you are skilled at it. If you're bored and you think that you want to give your trading another step, maybe reading the tape is the way you can go about doing it. But in until next time, folks, good luck on your Gauntlet Mini experience. Please click the like and subscribe button down below, and I will see you in our next video. Cheers, folks.